Hey everyone, my name is Adam Nixon and welcome to our very first episode of the Festival Circuit. This is a brand new podcast basically on all things Reading and Leeds and all things festivals. We wanted to keep it generic and make sure that we can discuss other festivals if need be. I'm joined by my co-host Ruben. Hello guys, you alright? How are we doing? Uh, yeah, I'm not too bad. I'm looking forward to it. Are you? Yeah, not too bad. I'm looking forward to, to getting into these headliners today and uh, and having a look who's going to be there at Reading this, this year. Yeah, so we're just going to kind of break down the headliners and the sub-headliners uh, of this year's lineup. Sort of discuss when they were last there, talk about what sort of music they have, sort of our opinions on them and that sort of thing. And obviously this year's a bit of an anomaly where we've got, t- well, six headliners and how many, like 12 sub-headliners. So, interesting. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot to get through. Yeah, there is. So that's why we can just break down the whole lineup because there's just way too much to talk about. But hopefully, the, we, we, we say the next episode we'll talk about just sort of like the lower acts and all yeah, the, we'll, all we'll the go through, stages. Yeah, we'll go through and have a look at some of the other names that we're excited to to see and uh, hopefully get your guys' opinions on um, on who you want us to, to talk about. Yeah, 100%. And any, any other festivals and things. I mean, people will be watching this who are probably going to a different festival, so make sure you let us know sort of what, what else you want to see. Uh, okay, so we'll go straight into the first one, which is on the Friday Main Stage East, and that is Stormzy. Okay, so first up on that Friday Main Stage East, I mean, we're going off of the Reading times, just to make it all easier, but yeah, we're going off of the Friday is Stormzy. He has just finished uh, coming off the back of his headline performance at Glasto. Probably one of the reasons that Reading booked him, but yeah, I'm a big fan of Stormzy. Yeah, he's that that Glastonbury set was uh, was unreal. I remember watching it live um, on on BBC, yeah. and just just thinking like, God, I need to see this guy. I've I've got tickets now to to see him at the O2 for whenever that gets rescheduled, because um, it was meant to be September last year. Yeah. So just coming off the, off of the back of of um, him headlining uh, twenty twenty. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to to seeing Stormzy and to see the the show that he's going to put on. Um, for his headline set yeah 100 percent. i mean i mean there's been a few people talking about him being like cancelling up because obviously all those tour dates have not been rescheduled yet but i'm sure it's just i mean it's a world tour it's a massive tour so it's probably just taking them ages to sort out venues um but yeah yeah, probably, yeah. so yeah i meant to be seeing him in the bournemouth show so again should be really good uh so obviously he's got a couple of number one singles namely being vossy bop and big for your boots and he was meant to headline 2020 and he was one of the headliners that did get moved over to 2021. Yeah, and he was like he was actually at Reading and Leeds in 2016 when he headlined the One Extra stage. So, pretty of a mad jump from when he was last there. Oh yeah, that's a it's a huge jump. I, I mean, it's it kind of reminds me of um, of some of the other acts. I mean, you kind of talk about your post Malones that we're going to be talking about uh, later that kind of make that jump that from smaller. And go all the way up to, to headliners, yeah. um, and Stormzy's making you know he's making an even bigger jump from that. And I think when he got booked for Glastonbury, it was quite a surprise for a lot of people yeah. that um, there was going to be a grime artist that was would headline Glastonbury. You know, stereotypically um, and historically, a quite um, an indie kind of like family orientated um, festival. Yeah. Um, but but it was when you know he, he put that headline. Um, performance on and he stole the show that, that for that weekend yeah definitely i think i think he's one of those people who will bring mixed opinions and as you said i think a lot of people would obviously glasso sells out instantly before anyone's even been announced and when stormzy gets announced as the first headline i'm pretty sure it was the first headline announced everyone was probably thinking my god what have i got myself into but no i think he's shocked a lot of people and i think that's definitely one of the reasons why he got booked for Reading and Leeds and I think it was a long time coming he even mentioned it in his song so whether they already had him booked for then who knows yeah uh, but yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Stormzy I think he brings a great option against Catfish and obviously you've got AJ Tracy just before him on that main surgery we're going to be talking about in a minute but yeah I think it's a great book in and I think it's probably a book in that's I mean the way he's going it's going to happen again and probably again <laughs> Oh yeah, for sure. He's going to be he's going to be a mainstay for the uh, for, for the UK kind of rap acts. He, he'll be here for years to come. Yeah, absolutely. So should we move on to Catfish? Let's do it. Right. So we're now going to go on to Catfish and the Bottlemen. Um, 
and they've they've been uh, at Reading three times before, um, and they're now obviously jumping up to the headline slot. Um, last time that they were here was 2015, um, and they sub headline the Reading One stage, um, and I think it's a, it's a it's a big jump for them, mm. but I think they're more than capable of doing it. They've got the fan base behind them, they've got the music to back it up. I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing them. I don't know about you. Yeah, 100%. I've been lucky, fortunate enough to see them once before. I saw them uh, at the Brighton Arena or Brighton Centre, I think. But yeah, no, really looking forward to seeing them. And I think they've done it quite smartly this year because I think Catfish is one of those names that gets dropped in every year whether they're going to be there. And I think they've waited for just the right amount of time for them to headline. I think they were waiting for that, for them to have that status, for them to release that third album and get them in. And I mean, I don't know about you, but whenever you start thinking about who could headline, Catfish is always one of those names that... We haven't seen. We haven't seen since was it 2015. You said, and I think it's yeah. you know one of those ones. A bit like when AM always gets rumoured. It's like yeah, they could be here this year. They could be this year, but now they finally are. Yeah, I think with Catfish, I think they've they've timed it perfectly with the six headliners because I think if, if they were a sole headliner, there'd be a lot of people that may be disappointed because as as a, as a three headliner, maybe they're not as big and maybe yeah. I haven't got the they're not going to be able to sell 100,000 tickets is kind of the way that a lot of people no. look at the headliners um, but you know as a, as a co-headliner they maybe could have done it but I think it's, they've done it perfectly with the six headliners get Catfish in there because people do want to see them hmm. uh, but when you're you know pairing them up with your Stormzy's your Post Malone's Liam Gallagher Queen's Disclosure like you've got all of these other headliners that you know people aren't going to be disappointed with the fact that Catfish are uh, uh, headlining yeah i do totally agree. I mean, we've seen them at festivals like Isla White, and they're not quite on the scale of um, how big Redding can be. And I think that's why they've probably had to wait for this six, six headliner thing. I think it's a very similar thing. I know you're obviously a big fan of them, and talking about them maybe headliner next year, Royal Blood. I think it could be. It's a very similar thing to them. Do you think? Do you think Royal Blood would headline if there was only three headliners? I I think so. I think they're they're now big enough as the third third album out, Typhoons. Um, I think they're big enough to go and to go and headline, maybe um, co-headline. Yeah. But I still think they'd, they'd be the later of the of the two um, if they did co-headline. Um, yeah. No, I'm, I'm I've got my uh, my money on uh, Raw Blood being at, uh, at Reading 2022. Especially if they're gonna uh, carry on with this six headline, I think too. Exactly. If, if the six headliners carry on, then I think Raw Blood are, are definitely a name that we get chucked about. But um, going back to Catfish, I think the rise of Catfish, seeing that back in 2013, they were on the BBC introducing stage, you know, with the likes of Slaves and Sandara Karma that were also on that stage. Um, 2014, then going on to the Festival Republic stage. And then obviously now they're headlining all those years later. You know, if you were lucky enough back in 2013 to, to watch them on the introducing stage, yeah. and you're now you're following them up to the to a headline uh, status, it's uh, it's a pretty incredible uh, journey they've they've taken. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, all their music's like I think all their albums have so many highlights to them. Some would argue a lot of their songs like sort of sound the same, and I get where people are coming from or why people aren't a huge fan of them. I mean, I don't think I think they are quite a, almost not controversial in the fact that their music is controversial, but I think. Some people probably, as you said earlier, wouldn't be happy if it was like them as the third headliner or, uh, you know, on their own. But no, I think I think it's a fantastic booking. I think they'll draw in a big crowd and especially that option against. I mean, I'm not saying they're clashing, but some people would prefer to go to Catfish rather than go and see Stormzy. Yeah, but I, I think with the uh, with the no clashes for the headliners, I think it's perfect for um, for people to see, go see both. You know, pe- yeah. you know, it's not. I think after the the year or well, the year and a half that it's going to be that people haven't been able to go out and uh, and see live music, I think people are just going to be absolutely biting to go and see as many acts as Everyone. they can. I know I am yeah, going to be. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to be trying to see as many acts as I can um, that weekend. I'm definitely just going to be. I feel like I'm just going to not stop running. I think there's so many acts on like every stage that I want to see, and I uh, just like you know, especially with the splits two main stages there's going to be you're going to want to see someone on one of the main stages and run over and catch the end of someone else's performance so yeah I think yeah. it's I think it's going to be a really really good year looking forward to it definitely right let's move on to our first Saturday headliner and that's Post Malone 
Right, so Post Malone is going to be back again for 2021 <laughs> after coming off the back of sub, uh, of headlining in 2019. Um, I think it's a really smart booking from uh, from Festival Republic here um, because he's a fan favourite. I think everyone uh, likes Post Malone. I don't know a single person no. that doesn't like at least one of his songs. Um, and anyone that's seen him live know that he is a performer. He sounds exactly live like he does in his studio recordings. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm really looking forward to seeing him for the fourth time, I think, when I see him this summer. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, I think, I think when he, um, when he debuted at Reading in 2018, I think he, I think, so he surprised so many people and I think he couldn't be more of a perfect Reading actor. I think so many people would love to see him, whether you're a fan of rap, whether you're a fan of rock, whether you're a fan of indie, I think he fit every single one of those builds and I can't I can't imagine him not being at the festival anymore it's gotten to the point where he's in, a, in his third time and yeah some people were a bit miffed off about that but for me I think he's amazing and, and I 100% support him coming back and back and back yeah I think people are people are always going to be <clears throat> if there's a back to back headliner people are always going to be a bit miffed and, and not be fully supporting of it because people want to see new acts because yeah. a lot of people go year on year on year but Post Malone is we've obviously had the break because of the pandemic he headlined 2019 he co-headlined with 21 pilots and both of those acts put on a really really good show yeah and I think Post Malone is going to be back he's got his new album now he's got Hollywood's Bleeding that he didn't have uh yeah he didn't have for, for no the, he didn't uh, for he had a couple of the singles a couple of the singles yeah yeah a couple of singles but Hollywood's Bleeding wasn't out so he's you know, he's got his new album. He's now got three albums, Stoney, Beer Bongs and Bentleys and Hollywood's Bleeding. And three albums worth of material. Yes, please. Get get me an hour yeah. and a half set, set of, uh, of Post Malone yeah. and, uh, and I'm all there. 100%. I mean, I think he's definitely going to be the favourite out of the two with Disclosure. But we'll go on to Disclosure in a minute. But yeah, I think he's got some great albums. All three of them are so, so good. Uh, they've all got their own merits to them. And... I think it's one of those ones that people when like bear in mind it was back in August when he got announced, so then it seemed really it really fresh. It was like the year after he was just there, whereas now still had all of these years with or almost two years with no live music. So I think yeah, I think people are going to be very happy with that and yeah, be chuffed with it by the end of it. Yeah, and he's a he's a massive name to have on the uh, have on the the lineup. He's he's doing Rolling Loud in Miami. He's headlining yeah. He's headlining Lollapalooza in in Chicago. Blimey, so you know yeah. he's he's a massive he's a massive massive name. And to have him on the lineup again is um, is quality. Definitely, and he's uh, you know he, with that jump from you know in 2018 he was he played at like four o'clock, and I think yeah it's, played the early set. Yeah, I think it's crazy, and I think. It's so so good to see him back again and getting his proper proper headlined slot because he'll be the last act this year, and yeah, I think it'll be brilliant. Okay, so moving on to our second Saturday headliner, and that is Disclosure, the two-piece DJ act who have not been at the festival since 2016, and they subheadlined Foles. Um, I think we were just saying. I think for me, it's probably. I'm, Look forward to seeing them. I've never seen them before. I think they'll put on a great show. I've spoke to friends who have seen them and they, they put on an amazing show. And I'm not saying that at all, but I think out of all six headliners, they're probably the least anticipated one. But that's in my opinion. I don't know if you agree. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think they're obviously going to be a great act um, to go and see. Um, you know, it's going to be towards the end of the night. You probably think, you're probably thinking, what? It's probably going to be eight o'clock-ish when they come on. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, it's going to be getting dark. It's going to be uh, you, you, you're there with your mates. We've had a year and a half off with no live music. I think anyone that is on that slot is going to do well. Disclosure, you're going to put on a great show. You know, there's going to be the lights. The and lights. It's just yeah. two DJ. Yeah, the two DJ acts. Um, you know, and and I think people are people are going to like them. They've got 15 million monthly streams on Spotify. People people are fans of them. Um, I think people are going to go watch it and just just enjoy the music. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, they've got so many songs that you don't even realise they're them. Like, obviously, they, they've teamed up with Sam Smith a couple of times um, for La- yeah. Latch and Omen. I think 
you know, those sort of songs will go off. Obviously, they've got White Noise, and they've got a couple of uh, songs with Khalid now, and he's become massive. We could see him at the festival one year. But, yeah, I think, you know, they got a, new, a fairly new album. In 2020, they released their new album, and I do think that they will, they will, they will well, to like sort of pardon the pun, they will light up sort of the show. They're also playing Park Life this year, so obviously a popular booking for this year. Whether they'll go to any more festivals, who knows? But yeah, I think I, I think they'll be good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing them. Yeah. Okay, so now going on to sort of Reading and Leeds royalty, so to speak, we're going to be talking about the absolute legend that is Liam Gallagher. Uh, he last played at Reading and Leeds in 2017 when he subheadlined to Muse, and that was on the Sunday as well, and now he's going to be finally sort of closing the stage this Sunday uh, this year. And yeah, I'm I'm all for it. I'm really looking forward to seeing Liam Gallagher. It's it's a legend act, you know. Oh, he's going to be playing Oasis songs. It's the Sunday night for for Reading at least, mm-hmm. um, and you're going to be there surrounded by your mates singing songs like Champagne Supernova. Um, and just all of the Oasis classics. And then he's also going to mix in, you know, like Wall of Glass and, and yeah, yeah. some of the songs that he's got um, of his own. Um, and yeah, no, I'm, just, I'm really looking forward to seeing him. I think he's, think he's do, really doing well with his like solo music as well. With, you know, you said Wall of Glass. He's also got Once and all songs like that. And I think he's doing, starting to do really, really well, you know, solo. And I think he's really establishing himself as his own sort of act I mean he's not just tagging on to all the Oasis stuff he's doing his own stuff people are enjoying his own stuff probably uh, slightly more so than Noel but I think it'll be really great and to see Jerry Cinnamon in just behind him as well it's going to be a really really nice uh, time to oh, be on yeah. stage I think Dark, Dark Fruits uh, music people <laughs> are going to and I, 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 I am part of that yeah I'm we all really, are <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to really love going from Jerry into into Liam yeah. you know it, it you can tell that that's kind of a match made in heaven because 100%. it was meant to happen in 2020 and yeah. it's, it's happening again in, in, in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's got two albums now, um, As You Were and Why Me, Why Not. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got two albums of solo music. He's got the whole discography of uh, Oasis. And I, I think he, he kind of he does mix it up. He knows that people are going to want to see the Oasis songs and he does a few of those whilst also mixing it in with his solo stuff. So I think having Liam there ending uh or closing the show for for reading is uh is, is perfect yeah definitely i think i think he's also um he's in demand this year he's also playing at transmit and isle of Wight, so very popular across the uk this year from south to from south to north so yeah i think it says a lot about them and i don't know if you saw recently but noel said he'll do the reunion for 100 million pounds so maybe we could see that <laughs> Uh, I think everyone uh, that's, that's listening to this right now would uh, would be all up for a, uh, an Oasis <laughs> reunion. Uh, it's got to happen one day, isn't it? Surely. <laughs> Let's hope so. But yeah, I think this the, the Sunday uh, at Reading is definitely interesting and really good for those people who love those that sort of acts because obviously you've got Liam Gallagher and obviously you've got Queens we're going to be talking about in a minute. And I think... You know those people who used to love the festival for its rock, like proper rock roots. They'll they'll really enjoy. They'll really enjoy the Sunday. Queens of the Stone Age are no strangers to Reading and Leeds Festival. They've played six times before. Um, they had a secret set back in 2017 um, with the latest release. Well, back then the related, uh, latest release of their album Villains. Uh, it was their first UK number one album. And, you know, they started off their Reading and Leeds careers back in 2000 and they, they headlined the Carling Premier stage, which now is better known to me and you as, as the pit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to, to seeing Queens of the Stone Age. They've got eight albums, so they've got a massive um, <laughs> plethora of music. Yeah, for, <laughs> you know, if they played every, uh, we'd be here for hours, <laughs> you know, if, <laughs> if they were playing every song. Um but yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing them. They're not playing any other festivals in the UK, at least, so it's a bit of a um, UK exclusive for R and L. Um, but yeah, they've you know they've they've headlined um, before back in 2014, mm-hmm. co-headlined with Paramore. You know yeah. the the uh, the famous Arctic Monkeys year with uh, with Blink 182. Um, you know, 2008 they sub headlined um, with Rage Against the Machine, which I was really looking forward to seeing in 2020. I don't know about you. But... Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say. I mean, the thing is, with Queen of the Stone Age, it was always a bit of 
Ah, oh, but you got them instead of rage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they um, kind of set themselves up then. But no, I think I think it's a great book, and I think a lot of people would be. I mean, I have obviously, you know, it's not it's not totally the music that I would be was originally into when they were announced. But obviously, now doing the doing the podcast and the doing the Reading Lead stuff, I've been listening to their stuff and just kind of getting myself familiar with it and uh, really starting to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm really really looking forward to seeing them. They're a proper like American rock band. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. Um, and and the lead singer Josh Homme, he's um, just he's recently um, produced Boilermaker, one of the singles from Typhoons from yeah. Royal Blood. So, so you know, he's, he's you know yeah he's he's doing lots of different things. He's he's out there, he's producing, um, and he's making music. So yeah, I'll, I'm really looking forward to to seeing Queens. Um, it'll be the seventh time that they've uh, they've been at the festival and. Um, yeah, it'd be the. I'm just. I'm really looking forward to to seeing what they've uh, what they've got in store. Yeah, people will love it, won't they? I think. Um, obviously, I said comparing them to Rage Against the Machine, but they're going to have their own fan base. They're going to have their own people who would prefer to see them. And I think it's never going to be a bad booking, is it? So no, I think it'll be great. And it's a another great. It's a great pair with Liam Gallagher. The only thing that is a bit strange is having Machine Gun Kelly and Youngblood going into them, but. You know, each their own, I suppose. Yeah, I think that kind of <clears throat> that rock, pop punk kind of that sort of vibe is good, is what we're going for on the Sunday. Yes. You know, the the, the other days you've got a bit more variety, but the Sunday um, is is what I think. Uh, you know, with with your your Denzel Curries, yeah, um, and your Neck Deeps and all of that, like it's that sort of that sort of day. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And I suppose as well, you've got the other festival republic festival um old london as well take place on the monday after and that sort of you know that's old sort of punky music and obviously they've got your machine gun kelly there so that's probably why they've sort of gone for that as well maybe they've thought about that in the future but no I think yeah I, I think i think that sort of pop punk is really coming back it is, i think yeah. mgk we'll, we'll talk about him later but i think he's really brought back um with tickets to my downfalls kind of really brought back that kind of punk yeah, 100%. Um, since lockdown. 100%. Okay, so now we're going to be chatting about all of the sub-headliners, probably a little bit quicker than the headliners, um, but we're going to be going through all 12 sub-headliners from Friday to Sunday. Okay, so the first sub-headline we're going to talk about is on the Friday just before Stormzy, and that is AJ Tracy. Uh, recently announced his new album and released his new album, Flu Game, off of the back of some of his bigger singles like with that Labrook Grove and that sort of thing and that album he was last there at 2019 and was on the main stage in 2019 and it makes sense for him to come back again yeah <clears throat> I remember seeing him on the main stage in 2019 it was um, just before Billie Eilish um, and he, he put on a good show he you know everyone was there <clears throat> i think a lot of people were there for billy eilish but pe- he's got fans people want to yeah. see him and when labrick grove came on there's a lot of people i think it was this it was the anthem of the summer yeah um, and everyone was singing it and uh, and people loved it. it i think he's going to be really good he's got new music he's going to come back um and put on an even better show i think yeah definitely i do think i think he's probably established himself to get his own sort of a few more fans as well I mean rather than people just being a fan of that song um, and I think yeah. him you know I mean it's it's, a, it's quite a big deal being a, whether there's six acts or three there's quite a big deal to be sub headlining so I think he's, he, he's had a he's had a big big jump because that Billy Billy Eilish played that the uh, the three 4pm slot yeah. where, you know uh, and AJ Tracy was just before that and he's now coming back sub headlining yeah, yeah. albeit you know, with with six headliners, but you sub headliners, so it's a big, big jump. Um, I think he fully deserves it. And great, obviously, because he is British. He's really bringing in that sort of UK sound and playing Park Life Transmit and Wireless this year. So very popular across, and it does make sense that he is so popular, and that's why he's at all these festivals. And on the same day, just before him, uh, depending on how they're going to do it, I don't know. I assume they'll probably alternate, but we're now going to be talking about Mabel. She was last at Reading and Leeds in 2019 as well, and she was classed as the special guest, and that was on the Radio 110, similar to 
uh, nothing but thieves this year on the main stage which was classed as like the special guest probably played sort of that afternoonish slot um and yeah has an album out in 2019 so it's interesting that they've brought her back for now but yeah i think and on the 2020 lineup she was not sub headlining she was like four or five down so she's made that jump up to now co sub headlining yeah. so whether that's just because they have six headliners who knows but yeah what do you think about mabel she she's not my cup of tea personally um and there's going to be everyone is going to have those sort of acts on the lineup where you're not a massive fan of them uh, and that's okay but mabel you know there's no doubting that she's got fans you know she's got 14 million streams monthly on on yeah. spotify she, she's got people that are going to want to come and see her um, and that's why I think she's playing, you know, so high. Um, is I think she deserves it. For yeah, sure. I think it, I think it's. I don't think she's got quite the caliber as like when Dua Lipa played. I don't think she's quite as enticing as one to go see in Dua Lipa. I could be wrong. I mean, for me, as I say, I saw her. She was the warm up to when I saw Khalid in twenty nineteen at London in the O two. He was. She was warm up alongside Ray and. I mean, she didn't like, like. She was good, but like, for as I say, for me, not not the same with you. Not my cup of tea, but no, great booking. I think she's going to be quite popular, and, and I'm sure a lot of fans will go and see her. But for me, it's a bit of an odd one, but I can see why. And on the on the main stage west, we've got Sam Fender sub headlining under Catfish and the Bottom End. I don't know about you, but I am really looking <laughs> forward. Um, just to see in Sam Fender. Yeah, I can't wait. He's definitely for me one of the one of the highlights of the lineup, and I really cannot wait to see him at all. Yeah, he's he's got his album Hypersonic Missiles, which obviously he did really really well. Um, mm-hmm. He's got the EP Dead Boys that he released um, uh, as well. You know, he he's getting booked. He's playing Isle of Wight, Neighbourhood Weekend, Transmit. Like he's doing a lot of festivals this summer. Um, yeah. he's a big big name. He's he's loved by a lot of people, um, and and I think that's why that's why he's here. They brought him back. You know, the last time he played was 2018. And he played the Festival Republic stage, so it's it's, it's, it's really? a big big jump again. Yeah, it's a big oh, big jump. I can't um, believe that. I saw. And, and, I was and, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all for it. I'm all for it that he's he's made this jump because he deserves it. And I think, you know, in a few years' time, maybe one two more albums. Sam Fender will be headlining the festival, no doubt in my mind. One hundred percent. I was thinking that as soon as they, because you know what Reading are like, they like getting a few. They like people to have a few albums under their belt, don't they? Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I think that'll be so so good, and I really cannot wait. And they've done it very smart to put them into Catfish as well. And I was saying when um, Lewis Capaldi dropped out, when we were predicting who it could be over on uh, the Randall Mill. We were saying about maybe it could have been Cortinas, and imagine if they did that, it would have been Sam Fender, Cortinas, Catfish all on the same day. Yeah, that would have been. That would have, yeah, that would have been beautiful. Um, but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to seeing like songs like Play God. I, I cannot, yeah. I've not seen Sam Fender before, and I no, cannot neither. wait to uh, to see him this summer. I know a lot of people want to see him as well because he's cancelled a few times, hasn't he? He's cancelled a few concerts over the. I think he's had problems yeah. with like, his throat and stuff. Um, yeah. But no, I cannot wait to see Sam Fender. I, he's definitely a highlight for me, and one of the reasons I really want to go to the festival. Right, and H is going to be coming back as well from 2019. He's getting brought back, and he's also playing on that main stage West under Sam Fender and Catfish. Um, again, I'm really looking forward to seeing H. He puts on a good show. Um, 2019, he was meant to play the one extra stage, um, but got bumped up into Billie Eilish's slot because obviously ah. Billie Eilish was meant to play ra- Radio One stage. She got bumped up to the main stage. Yeah, I didn't know he got bumped as well. That's interesting. Yeah, so so, so he, he took that to, to that Radio One slot. I went and saw him, and I, it was he, he puts on a really good show. You know, he's got songs. You know, Keisha Becky. Yeah. Um, Taste. You know, he's got he's got songs now that that people like. He's he's. The anthems, People, aren't they? I think he's a bit, a bit like Mar. Yeah, they're anthems. I think he's a bit like Mar. Mar. You either love him or you hate him. I think. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But, um, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Yeah, definitely. I think he really filled out that Radio One stage as well, and so it was very smart that he did that. And be interesting to see what he'll be like, sort of in that outdoor environment, because you know what it's like in the tent. It's almost like a proper. It's almost like an intimate gig, isn't it? Whereas, yeah. uh, it'd be interesting yeah. to see what he's yeah, like yeah, out yeah, on that main yeah. stage. You know, the atmospheres in the tents are, you know, you can't recreate them. Um, at, you know, out, outdoors, I think main stage, he's still going to put on a good show. 
he's going to have a lot of people, I think, turn out for him. Um, and yeah, no, I'm really looking, really looking forward to seeing Age. Could also see him uh, teaming up with AJ Tracy because they haven't got the same slot. So and they're only going to yeah. be they're only going to be a short walk away from each other, I assume. And they're so, going to be on knows? the same day. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, a, that's a yeah, that's a good shout. To be fair, I think they could uh, could do a song together. Yeah, especially for like AJ's sec, since he is covered on. And then they're all there for Stormzy. I mean, Stormzy could bring out anyone, really. So, yeah. Oh, uh, I, Storm, Stormzy, Stormzy will probably bring out AJ Tracy. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if that happens. Right, and subheadlining under Post Malone, my, you know, the, the band I'm most looking forward to seeing is Two Door Cinema Club. I've not seen them before. Um, and my God, I'm looking forward to seeing them. I don't know about you, Adam. Yeah, they'll be brilliant and honestly i just can't wait until the riff of what you know comes on that will be the amount of times i've watched the video of them doing it before and to actually be there it's going to be incredible i've as again i haven't seen them either and yeah really great booking it'd be so good to see their albums i think you know you've made it as a band when people are singing a riff yeah <laughs> absolutely song i think that i think that's when you know you've made it you know that that um, that video, I think, was the 2011 when they played on the main stage, and that, that was the first time they played Reading and Leeds, um, and that was under Pulp and Strokes, who ended up with a headline that, that uh, day. Oh, they came yeah. back again the, the following year, and they subheadlined on the Radio One stage, um, and then came back four years later and, and headlined the Radio One stage um, back in 2016, um, and, and they played the same time as Red Hot Chili Peppers. So if you were there, that would have been quite a yeah, quite a hard decision, decision to make whether you go whether you, whether you go and see Chili Peppers or go and see um, Two Door. And then the last time they were here was uh, it was 2017, um, and that was third from the top under Bastille and Kasabian. Um, so yeah, they're going to be back again um, five years on. You know, that's a long time, yeah, um, and they're much anticipated. I think the Reading and Leeds audience, um, I think they're fan favourites. Two Door. I, I don't. Yeah, I think everyone's going to be excited to see them. One of the one of those acts that is interesting that they've never hit that sort of headliner place. They've never headlined across, or even uh, I don't think you said they co-headlined either, like the main stage. I mean, no. Um, no. So yeah, it's one of those ones. But no, I think they they're going to be around as well for a little while. Whether they ever get to that stage, I don't know if they will or not. But I think it'll be so so good. And you said earlier that they were just behind Bastille, and I think it's the same sort of thing with Bastille. They're one of those acts that. I can't, they'll always be around, but I can't imagine them ever getting to that headline status, not now anyway. Yeah, I think, you know, Tudor, they've got four albums out now. Um, the latest one, False Alarm, they, they released back in um, 2019 and played Glastonbury um, on the other stage that year. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, they're, they're a quality, quality band. I yeah. don't know whether, yeah, as you say, they'll ever make that headline status. You know, the songs they've got, especially from um, from Tourist History, so the first album, um, they've got some absolute bangers in there that people love. You know, you got what you know, Undercover Martin, something good can work. Like there's songs on there that people absolutely love, but I think they kind of miss the boat with uh, with jumping up yeah. to headline status. Yeah, probably wasn't. There probably wasn't much in it. They were probably the wrong timing or whatever. But no, I think they're gonna be so good. They're they're drawing a huge crowd, and I can't wait for them. And playing just before Two Door Cinema Club is the Kid Leroy. He's the seventeen-year-old uh, Australian rapper, singer, songwriter. You know, he does it all. Um, he's got one album out, um, Fuck Love, um, and he's just he's really come into his own in the past year. I'd say I think during lockdown. And I think maybe that TikTok kind of helped him grow a lot. Um, you know, he, he had uh, Without You, um, that's now got 400 million, yeah, 400 million streams on Spotify. So, you know, that that really helped him grow. Um, and obviously, he's 17, he's not played Reading and Leeds before, and he's coming up and he's playing third from top mm-hmm. on the main stage West. So, you know, it's, it's a massive, massive achievement um, for the kid Leroy. Um, he's also playing Alt London, um, and that's the day after Reading and Leeds finishes, so that's on the Monday um, at Clapham Common. And yeah, I think it's a really smart booking from from Festival Republic. They've got him over. They've got him playing Reading, Leeds, and Old London. Um, and yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing to seeing the sort of show that Kid Leroy puts on. 
Yeah, yeah, me too. I was so happy when it was announced because he's been one of my favourite artists this year. Not just because of the sheer majority, like, sheer very sheer variety of songs he has. They're so different. They're all, I think he's got some really, really good tracks. And I think it's very interesting that he is sub-headlining where he is now, but I, I, I'm not, I'm not against it. When I was doing predictions, I even predicted him back in life. Whenever I did a prediction poster on Reading Needs Me, when it was like, oh, I don't know, March, and I put Kid Leroy on there, and then um, and then he was there in the announcement, and I think he was gonna have to play sort of high up just because of the, how well he's doing. They couldn't. It's a bit like when Post Malone came in, they couldn't just chuck him really low down because he's still a massive artist, and it's a very similar artist to. It's a very similar booking to Post Malone in 18 and yeah. Billie Eilish in 19. Very similar. And I think, um, I hope he's good live and I hope he proves us all to be a great, a great performer. Yeah, I think if he puts on a good show, people are going to like him. He's going to get even more fans. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him back again in 2022, potentially even playing a higher slot. We'll, we'll yeah. see how he does in the next year. Okay, so now we are going on to that main stage West on the Saturday and playing just behind Disclosure is the Wombats. They were last there in 2019, they played third from top and they are now sub-headlining. They might have teased their new album uh, on their Instagram and I think that could come in great time in for them ready to perform in August and I am really looking forward to them, I don't know about you. I am really, really, really looking forward to seeing the Wombats. <laughs> Saw them in 2019 on the main stage at Reading um, and they just put on a great show. It's, it's a similar sort of booking to, to Tudor. Um, is. The fact yeah. that they've got they've got bangers that people just love to, to, to sing along to, you know, um, kill the director, moving to New York. You know, Greek tragedy um, back in, in, in lockdown really through TikTok um, got a bit of a resurgence. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, they've got They've got four albums, I think now. Um, oh, so they've done. They've done well to get five, good, yeah. good, good singles out of every album. I mean, even their most recent one, they've got the Cheetah Tongue was on that, and that did well. Yeah, Lemon to a Knife Fight, Turn. They've got they've got some really good songs on that latest album. I think every album there's there's three, four, five great yeah. songs that you can that you can pick from it. I mean, I think my probably my favourite album of all time is uh, This Modern Glitch by yeah. Wombats, which yeah. came out in 2011. Uh, every song on that album is <laughs> is a is a banger, um, so I'm really looking forward to to seeing what they uh, what they can do this year. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, they played. Didn't they play 2018 as well? I think they did. Yeah, they um, did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, no, I was just going to say that they um they they're already a lead staple now almost. Um, mm. and people, you know, people may turn their noses up at them being here again, but I I, I think they're just a, a, a classic festival indie band. Yeah. I think 100%. you're you're there in the sun with your mates. I don't see that. I don't think there's a better band to see than the Wombats. And uh, and if you want to see them this year, there aren't that many festivals that are out there. They're only at Reading and Leeds and Neighbourhood Weekender. They're not. They haven't been booked up like the Why Not, the Ball Masters or anything. So, yeah, that's also another interesting thing. Uh, but yeah, so now we will move on to Slow Tie and yeah, for me. <sighs> It's annoying because I like that sort of music, but I just cannot warm to slow tie. I don't know why. I really don't know why because I sh- should like it and I've tried to listen to it. I just can't warm to him. I get it. I get the hype around him and, and the, uh, his jump is admirable. I don't know if you know this, but when he was at 2019, he was sick from top on the Radio 1 stage. He played at 2 p.m. And now look where mm. he is. So, yeah, I mean, i probably going to get, you know, you probably get pelters for saying if you don't like him, but I don't know. What about you? <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of Slow Tie. Um, he's a you know, Northampton boy. Um, a few of my housemates are from Northampton, so ah. they, they kind of got 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 me into into Slow Tie. Um, you know, he, he set up that the, the Happy Land um, yes. festival in in, in Northampton. Um, you know, with acts like Idols. That yeah, I, good I, acts. I'm a massive massive fan yeah. of Idols. Easy Life, Biba Doobie. Yeah, there's loads of acts there that that, that he's got. Um, and he just is. You know, he's the bloke prances around on stage a lot of the time in his pants and in shoes and just and just raps and, and sings and just oh, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing Slow Tie um for a second time. Well I've got I've got a summer to um warm to him. <laughs> uh but yeah, yeah, I think you you're gonna have to get on that. 
Yeah, I think I will. I just, you know, I mean, he's he's also at Park Life, All Points East, and Ball Masters this year as well. So he's got to be popular, isn't he? So yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll have to really get myself into him. But no, I think I think he's. Uh, it makes sense as to why I've got him. I mean, I think he should be where he is on the lineup. I think that's the perfect slot for him. Uh, and going into one bats and disclosure as well. I mean, people. He, he, there might be that middle ground that people will be happy to watch him before seeing those acts too. So, no, I think he'll be, uh, yeah, I think he'll be very popular. We mentioned it earlier that the perfect person going into Liam Gallagher is the Scottish lad, Jerry Cinnamon. Uh, he has emerged, I think, as probably one of the most anticipated acts. Uh, a lot of people voted they wanted to see him over Wolf Alice, more so than Wolf Alice, and I got a lot of hate on my Twitter. A lot of people didn't understand that. <laughs> but um, oh, I think he'll, I don't think he's ever been to Reading and Leeds, and I think he's going to be fantastic. He's got a couple of albums. He's got The Bonnie that came out in 2020 as well, and obviously how popular... Belter, Belter is how popular like sometimes is they've got a combination of 100 million streams between them and yeah he's he's going to be huge I think he's going to have a massive massive crowd yeah uh, Erratic Cinematic is That's what an album that That's is it. sometimes Lullaby Belter Fortunes Favour the Bowl Diamonds you can the mention Mad, every yeah, loads. yeah you can you can mention every uh, song on that album um, and it, even with um even with the Bonnie as well, Canter, Campfire, Bam, Bamfire, um, and just there's there's something about his music that's um, that's just very festival acts. Like so, you, you I, I don't know everyone watching this. If you go onto YouTube and type up him at Transmit, Transmit, and just oh watch my it, god, <laughs> it, you'll get it. I think it's forty five. It's forty five minutes. Watch it, and you will be a Jerry Cinnamon fan by the end of that video. I 100%. guarantee you. You'll get it. You'll get it. You'll he, get the hype. He, he is unbelievable live. He, he just puts on a show. He is a showman, um, and I, I am so glad that they rebooked him with Liam Gallagher um, for twenty twenty one and carried him over. They had to, really, didn't they? But yeah, I think, I think honestly, to be fair, that Sunday's a heavyweight day with. Uh, Wolf Alice as well, it's heavyweight, and we're going to be talking about them uh, in a second, but I can't wait to see Jerry Cinema, I think he's going to be so good, he's done so well, I'm, when I went and saw Cortina's in, oh, when was that, 2018, 2019, 2018 I think it was, I went and saw Cortina's and uh, Jerry Cinema was their warm-up, and the only date they didn't do was the one, uh, he didn't do, is the one I went to. <laughs> so oh, I didn't get to see, nightmare. yeah I know, so I didn't get to see, it literally on the poster it says, um, excludes the day that I went. I was like, oh, killer. But, um, yeah, it shows how much he's grown and I think he'll be really, really good. Uh, we mentioned him just now, but Wolf Alice it will be underneath Jerry Cinnamon on that Saturday and I think that's an amazing booking. I can't believe they've got six headliners and they're not one of them. So, yeah, they were last day on the Radio 1 stage in 2018. They headline that. And they're releasing a new album this year. It's like in like a week or two time on the 4th of June. That's called Blue Weekend. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Wolf Alice. I didn't see them when I went in 2018. So I'm excited to see them. Yeah. It's nice to see a bit of female representation as well. Because, you know, with the acts that we've talked about today, it's, it's been Mabel and then Wolf yeah, Alice. That's 100%. obviously... Um, so, yeah, it's nice to see that there's women. Uh, uh, and with the six headliners, I think Festival Republic, well, I don't think I know that Festival Republic have let themselves down by not having a female headliner. Um, I think next year with Billie Eilish, I think it will be the yeah. year that we get a female headliner. Um, but it wasn't to be this year. Will that be for the first um, time? The Wolf Alley. Uh, no, because Paramore. Oh, of course. Um, of course. And I think there's a few other acts that have yeah. been headlined with female um uh, band members, but I think Wolf Alice, they sh should be playing higher, yeah, realistically. And there's a lot of people, um, a lot of outrage, I guess, um, online about Jerry Cinnamon playing over Wolf Alice. Um, it would just I think be... we should be, ha yeah. I think we should we should be happy that they're both there and we yes. we get to see get to see some great music. I think I think they've just I think really they've just done that so it's Jerry Cinnamon and Liam Gallagher as opposed to saying that Jerry Cinnamon is bigger I think they just know that that yeah, combination no, yeah, is sure. better. Um, but sure. yeah, I think of their new song "Last Man on Earth," uh, one of the singles for their new album. I really like it. I'm really liking the sound of that new album. 
So yeah, I think uh, they're on they're on tour for their new album, but they're not at any festivals. They're not at any other festivals yet. So you know, if you're going to Reading, consider yourself a bit lucky. But I can't. I'm looking forward yeah, to seeing exactly. Warpath. I think they'll be brilliant. And as I say they're returning for the first time for three years or so. So yeah, they'll be very welcome. Well, so Machine Gun Kelly is returning um, from the last time he was here, and the only time um, that he's been here is in 2019 for the Radio One. At least I think. Um, he played that two, three p.m. slot on the uh, on the Radio One stage. Um, he brought out Young Blood. Young Blood brought him out on the main <laughs> stage. Um, is he, uh, to, to do um, to do I'm Not Okay, which is an absolute bop, is, and I hope is. they do it it's again. And I think that's what that's why they've been put together. They've um, got a few songs, haven't they? On, acting on the like lineup. that as well. And they've got yeah, acting yeah, they've got acting like that, um, and and even. Um, in lockdown, so they had the lockdown se- um, lockdown session series that MGK did uh, on YouTube, um, and he, they did sa- uh, Champagne Supernova cover um, together, him and Youngblood, yeah. um, and that that was really good. And it, uh, on that same um, lockdown series, they did um, Misery Business, the the Paramore song, and he covered that, mm-hmm. and that's on the uh, deluxe album of Tickets to My Downfall. Um, but yeah, I think lockdown. Last year, I think MGK probably was was one of the biggest artists of 2020. Um, he released one of the the, the best um, and biggest albums of 2020 with Tickets to My Downfall, and how he jumped from you know it, it, it was a sixth album. Like he, he's done a lot before, and he's kind of moved more from um, a rap act to to a pop punk uh, pop punk act yeah. um, with Tickets to My Downfall. Um, it's fantastic that kind of, as well. Yeah, it's an amazing album. yeah, no, it, it's an. It, I think it's the best album of, of last year. Yeah. Um, you could see the rise um, and, and how even back in 2017 with um, with Bloom the album, uh, they had songs like "Let You Go," which is kind of like an early insight of of his rock kind of punk side. Um, and then with the following album, had Rap Devil, and he had mm-hmm. his, his Eminem feud um, back yes. in 2018. Yeah, Kill Shot. Yeah, and then came. Yeah, exactly. And then had Hotel Diablo um, that he that he came to Reading with, um, and and he, he he put on a really really good show. Um, I think there's on YouTube there's a few clips of, of some of the songs like Candy that he did um, at Reading uh, that, that are well worth a watch. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really looking really looking forward to seeing uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be happy that he's there. And it was one of those ones at the start when I first saw the announcement. I was like. Christ, like he's up high, and then you listen to like tickets to my downfall, and I was like, yeah, this is a serious artist, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him. And he's really, really like, you know, flipped my expectation of him and my opinion of him, and I really look forward to it. And I cannot wait to see him, and as well as uh, and the, him pairing him next to Youngblood, who we'll talk about in a minute, who I've really got into as well. I'm really looking forward to it, and obviously he's at Old London, uh, Machine Gun Kelly, yeah, on the Monday as well. Yeah, yeah, he's play, playing Old London, so the Festival Republic have got him over because they know he's a big name. He's going to sell tickets, yeah. Um, and people are going to be really, really looking forward to seeing live um, for the first time in the UK. Tickets to my downfall, and some of the songs off of that, like Bloody Valentine, yeah. um, My Ex's Best Friend, and all of those songs um, from that album. Yeah, definitely, some amazing songs on there. And the last act that we will be talking about is Young Blood. I think what a way to end um, this first podcast episode with Youngblood. Mm-hmm. Um, he's co- he's coming coming back again. They played main stage 2019. It was it was an earlier uh, an earlier slot for him, um, but you know 2019 was a was a big big year for him. That's kind of where he he gained a lot of fans. You know he had um, 21st Century Liability, the album that came yeah. out in 2018, the underrated Youth as well, an EP that he that he brought out. So you know he. He has he had songs, um, and now he's he's got weird, um, weird. the twenty twenty album. That's yeah, an amazing album that, that I he think. that he brought out. There's there's some great songs. I think it was there was it was a mixed opinions on it. Uh, I don't think I'm I'm the same. There's a few songs on there um, that are great, and there's also yes. a few songs on there that that I'm not a massive fan yeah, of. Yeah, there's a but, song that's know, like Super Dead Friends. I really don't like that song at all. But then you've got yeah, some that but, are like Parents, and I think it's brilliant. Yeah, Parents is a great song that he does. Yeah. Um, you know, weird Cotton Candy, Strawberry Lipstick, um, yeah. Mars. There's so many yes. songs on there that he's he's, he's going to do, um, uh, and it's going to be a change up. And he's obviously playing a much higher slot um, than he did in in 2019. 
um, 2018, he was playing the Festival Republic stage. So, you know, again, three years and, uh, and oh, he's jumped that. up to, to, to where he is now. So, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's a way of looking at it. You look at some of the, um, the the acts lower down this year and think three, four, maybe years time, they, yeah. those could be some of the, the sub-headliners we talk about. Yeah, so, definitely. Well, you've got to think about it as well. Like, for me, what got uh, me into Youngblood was the KSI song, Patient. And I really like that song. And then, you know, I started listening to Youngblood and I was like, yeah, this guy's a serious... Like, and I really, really like like him as a person as well. I think he, his personality brings a lot of it. And I think Youngblood's one of them ones that probably could headline in the future as well. Yeah, I think he's got a long way to go to, to, to headline. But some of the songs, you know, I love you or you marry me. 21st century liability obviously um they're just great acts uh great acts great songs um and if you go onto youtube again have a look at i think his whole set um from 2019 yeah it is is up there there. so so give give it a watch um and and another one like you're gonna like a lot of the songs that, that that he sings and you put on a really really good show yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And it's interesting what you said about other acts that could go on to headline or be higher up. I mean, you think about people like Easy Life, they're getting popular. They could be very high up very soon. Um, yeah, but, yeah, like, no, you, you, you've got your, you've got your, like, your, your girl in reds and, and your blocks yeah. um, that, are, that are lower down now, but, but give it a few years and they could be up. Talk, we could be talking about them sub-headlining. Um, easily. Or even easily. headlining the festival. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that sort of concludes our first podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's not been quite how we planned because of a few difficulties getting up, like cause we were going to have our video and stuff. But I hope you guys have still enjoyed it and we will hopefully be back in a couple of weeks' time and we'll all be sorted. So that would be good. They're gonna, we're going to try and get them out every two weeks, did we say? Yeah, I think every two weeks. Yeah. Um, and just get, get these podcast episodes out for you, for you guys to tune in. Yeah, 100%. And we'll uh, probably be talking about all the other acts on the Radio on the radio 1 stage, or not the Radio 1 stage, but the 1 Extra stage, Festival Republic stage and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next episode. Thank you very much for joining me for this week, Ruben. Hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, I have. I've really enjoyed myself. Cheers, guys, to everyone that's got this far um, and is watching. Uh, if you have got this far, Put a comment down, uh, or just let us know on social media what you want to see um, for, for for the next episode, um, and we will try and do as much content as you guys uh, you guys want to see. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I hope you guys did enjoy. This has been the festival circuit on the Randall Mill and on Spotify and things like that. Hopefully, if it all goes to plan, and uh, yeah. <laughs>